Okay, today we're gonna sketch cosecant of x transformed and untransformed, like no transformations. All right, so cosecant, I hope you do realize, is the reciprocal of sine. The cosecant of a variable x is one over sine of x. Now sine x has x-intercepts at zero pi and two pi if you're working in radians. And because you can't take one divided by zero, that means cosecant x has vertical asymptotes at zero pi and two pi. And it goes on like that, three pi, four pi, five pi. I'm gonna label those here for you. These are vertical asymptotes. All right, sine also has its maximum at pi over two comma one, so cosecant will have a local minimum there. It ends up opening upward like a U shaped this way. That's supposed to be the local minimum. Sine has its, its own minimum at three pi over two comma negative one. And this portion of cosecant opens downward and it repeats like this every two pi simply because sine also repeats itself every two pi. The things and properties about this that I want you to know in order to be able to graph this with transformations is that the space in between the minimum and the maximum is two units tall. That's one unit above or below the middle each. I also want you to remember that it has a period of two pi and it has a vertical asymptote halfway between its beginning and end, okay? Now, let's sketch this one, this transformed cosecant function. It has a vertical stretch of three. It has a vertical shift of up six. That gives us information we can use immediately. Here is going to be my grid. Our vertical middle is going to be here at six. Now normally cosecant starts one above it and ends one below it, or uh, how do I word that again? There's a zone in between seven and five, if this was untransformed with this vertical stretch, where there is no function. But because this is stretched by three, it means our local minimum will reach nine. That is stretched by a factor of three relative to the original one, and it will have its local maximum at three. Now, I did not make this scale look very good, but what are you gonna do? Sue me. So, this has already helped us account for the vertical stretch and the vertical shift. This represents a horizontal compression by a factor of a half. That means the period of this new transformed cosecant is going to be half of two pi. That's two pi over k, which is just pi. And more importantly, that first vertical asymptote is not going to be at x equals zero. It is going to be at x equals pi over four because there is a shift right of pi over four. So let's label that too. I'm gonna to call this pi over four, and I'm going to put a vertical asymptote there. My third vertical asymptote, or my equivalent of two pi in untransformed cosecant, comes one pi later. That is five pi over four, vertical asymptote. And there is another vertical asymptote directly between those two at three pi over four. That was an easy uh, set of numbers to average. You might have to add them up yourself and divide by two in order to get that midpoint. This pi over four and its endpoint at five pi over four helps us account for the phase shift of right pi over four and the horizontal compression, which changes the period to a single pi instead of two pi. And after that, you already know how this looks. Between your two first vertical asymptotes and up at what is your new local minimum is the bottom of your U here. 
and between your second two vertical asymptotes at what is your new local maximum, goes there. And this repeats itself every pi as well. Let me just emphasize that the difference between the local maximum and minimum here was six, three times larger than the original two. And that represented three above and three below the vertical middle, that vertical middle being that positive six here. All right, that was actually it. All you really have to do is remember what the original looks like, be willing to move your midpoint, vertical midpoint, upward or downward according to your vertical shift, make your maximums and minimums as far away from that vertical middle as your vertical stretch requests, and place your asymptotes strategically according to your phase shift and new period. It's pretty straightforward. Took no time at all. Hope it takes no time at all for you on the test too. Keep practicing and best of luck.